our channel. Today we're going to be making a clean and simple card using the hibiscus stamp from Sensational uh, Stamps. Uh, and right now I'm just laying out my cuddle bug because I'm taking a die, a uh, thanks die from Hero Arts, and I'm placing it at the bottom of my card base, which is a standard A2 side, side folding card base. And so now I'm just placing the um, die there making sure it's nice and straight. I get out a piece of uh, post-it uh, paper, but I decide that it's not quite straight enough, so I'm going to straighten a little bit more. And I am going to take and put the post-it paper down now, and I'm going to cut that thanks uh, die out of the uh, um, card base now. I chose this style of card because I tend to like clean and simple cards. Uh, I'm just not a messy crafter and so I like things just nice and neat when I work and I'm the same way with on my style of projects. So now I've taken out my Misty and I'm going to be stamping a sentiment on it um, and I'm also going to be stamping the hibiscus flower. So the sentiment is going to be placed under the word uh, the die cut out thanks and it says I really appreciate all you do. And so right now I'm just inking up uh, my stamps with a uh, Memento black ink. Um, it's Copic friendly as long as you let it dry. Um, so now I'm going to take out my powder tool and I'm going to rub powder all over it because my plan is to take some clear embossing powder and to emboss it. Um, and this gives the uh, the lines of the stamp, it gives it a nice raised impression and it makes it nice uh, the lines nice and shiny so plus it helps with the Copic coloring um, so when you're coloring um, you tend to stain the lines better that way because uh, the lines are raised so now I'm going to even though I got a really good impression the first time I decided I needed to stamp it a second time and the reason for that is because I want to put as much ink on the paper so the embossing powder has plenty of ink to stick to. Now because I'm not using a watermark um, ink pad and I'm using uh, Memento Black ink, the watermark ink pad it stays stickier for a longer amount of time than just the colored dye um, ink pads. So I have to make sure after I get this uh, all pressed on there I'm going to take it out of the misty real quick and I'm going to grab my embossing powder and uh, put it on right away. Um, that way it'll stick and won't dry out. So I want to make sure I've got plenty on there so I'm actually going to do it a couple times. So right there you see the first time and I'm going to take it off and just tap it gently. You don't want to tap too hard or you're going to um, have a lot of that uh, embossing powder fall off. So there I'm doing it for the second time. Again, I just want to make sure I get plenty on there so it ends up uh, doing it really nice. The nice thing about this hibiscus stamp, it's so pretty that I think with just a sentiment that it can stand alone on a card and be just a very elegant looking card. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my embossing powder away. And I tend to like to get as much of what put away as I can. So now I'm taking the heat gun. I made sure and heated uh, the heat gun for about a minute or so ahead of time. And you notice I'm doing short uh, uh, circular motions because I don't want to hold it on the uh, any sp any spot more than I have to because it could burn the image, and you don't want that to happen. So I was just testing there to see if the embossing powder is all gone. So now what I'm going to do is do my Copic coloring. I have three colors for the hibiscus flower, and that's the only image. Right now, um, I'm going to take the darkest um, darkest color first, and I'm going to uh, run uh, the darkest color. I'm going to uh, go around the inside of the petal, each of the four petals, and I'm just going to take and put that uh, um, uh, image or, or the color down on the inside. Of the petal and you notice um, throughout this video I forgot to uh, color that inside s uh, stem piece right there and so um, 
now what I'm doing is I'm taking the medium color and I'm going over the darker color and I'm to blend it out and I'm just going a little further out onto the flower with the uh, medium colored co uh, thing, uh, Copic. So the purpose is to blend out that uh, darker color um, and the nice thing about it is it gives it some nice uh, dimension. So now I'm taking the last color and I'm going over the two colors that I did before and I'm going all the way out to the outside. And so what ends up happening with this is it, um, it really adds some depth to the flower so you don't have just a plain old flower. I'm not, not by any means a Copic expert, but I'm learning and getting better as time goes on. I watch a lot of videos to see how other people color it. Now what I'm doing is taking some Sizzix um, double-sided adhesive paper and I'm going to be putting that on the inside. Now I chose to do the whole inside of the card with the uh, adhesive and I'm just going to leave the backing on the uh, back side of it. But you could actually, if you wanted to, you could take and uh, just cut a small piece that goes across the thanks die cutout and then you could uh, just put a piece of cardstock across the card or you can leave it I mean it's your choice I personally just decided to go this way and didn't even really think about it any other way but uh, those are two other options um, I just like just like the look of this and it's so pretty when it's all said and done so now that I've got that cut out, I am going to, now I'm getting out my, um, it's, it's, the brand is called Art Minds. I got it from, uh, I believe it was from Michael's or it could have been Joanne's, but it's Art Minds Extra Fine Glitter and the color is Amethyst. It matches, you can't tell it as much in here, but it really matches the color of the purple, the uh, darker purple in the flowers uh, when I colored that darker color. So now what I'm doing is burnishing it really good. If you burnish it really good, uh, that double-sided adhesive paper works really good because then you don't have glitter coming off all the time. It'll stay on there really well. So now I'm taking a paintbrush. I'm just getting all the extra glitter off. Um, I hate to waste uh, any any materials. I know a lot of people don't like using um, glitter because it's such a mess, but I find if you're careful, you can keep it mostly self-contained in the um, on the paper. So I'm just finishing up uh, getting all that extra glitter off, um, and then what I'll do is I'll end up putting that glitter away uh, as much as I can get off the paper. So there we go. So I'm just going to cover it so I don't, uh, now I'm trimming the edges because the, some of that uh, adhesive back paper ended up sticking out. I didn't get it cut close enough, so I'm just trimming the edges so that uh, it's a much smoother look to it. Now the one thing I realized on the next part of this card is I should have taken the inside letters of the word thanks the inside parts of letters and I should have put those down with a multimedia mat um, onto the uh, paper before I actually added the glitter I didn't that made my job a lot harder because it's harder the the multimedia mat doesn't stick as well to glitter as it would the paper so it took longer and then a second part was after I had done that I could have taken and actually put uh, glue on um, the word parts when they're still in the die and then just stuck that down and poke those uh, parts out with my um, it's I think it's Spellbinders uh, tool in one and I could have just uh, went and did that but I didn't do that either so I made my job a lot harder